Today in the France 24 debate, can Germany save Europe? And from the European Parliament in Strasbourg, uh, Euro MP Marcus Ferber of Germany's ruling Christian Democrats, thanks for joining us. Um, Thank you. Also joining us from the German Green Party, she's a member of the European Parliament, uh, Franziska Brontner. I believe you're on a train head, headed for Freiburg. And also with us here in Paris, a former senior economist at the IMF, Stéphane Cosset from the centre-right Modem Party, Hello. and uh, Mathilde Bouillet of the uh, French socialist-leaning think tank Terra Nova. Thank you, by, thank you for being with thank us you. from Dublin in a moment. We hope to be joined by Owen O'Broin of the nationalist Sinn Féin party, uh, which opposed last November's EU IMF bailout for Ireland. Uh, it, has this been what they call in uh, legislative circles a heavy lift, uh, getting uh, everybody to fall in line and uh, inside of the uh, CSU-CDU coalition? I think it's not a question to speak about how uh, results can be achieved, but I think at the end every member of the Deutsche Bundestag knows about his responsibility or her responsibility. And it's not only a question whether Germany takes uh, its uh, things uh, which have been agreed on the 21st of July in Brussels, it's as well the question whether Europe will resist all the attacks we get for the euro and all the political attacks which we saw at the weekend uh, by the IMF or by President Obama, who is making Europe re responsible for his failures in economies. And that is something we, has to resist. we have to resist as well. Uh, on that point, Stéphane Cosset, uh, European markets uh, shot up this uh, Tuesday. They seem to believe the Germans are going to be uh, saying yes to that uh, fund. Yes, they do, but there, there has been so much volatility so far that it's, it's difficult to give any direction, uh, I believe. So uh, let's not take that for, for granted. Uh, let's, to, let's look at what's going to happen in, uh, in Germany, uh, but also in the rest of Europe. Uh, I believe that Germany has no, no other option, actually, than uh, voting for uh, as Germany is really fully integrated within the euro area. Uh, look at its, its trade, 44% of its exports uh, are with uh, the rest of uh, the euro area, 63% with the U European Union. So the country is fully integrated and I'm really happy to, to see that uh, uh, things are shaping in the right direction. All right, but uh, you still have uh, the tricky question of uh, selling it to voters still, because Financial Times, for instance, this Tuesday, uh, reprinting a poll that shows that 75% of the Germans oppose more money for a Euro Rescue Fund. That's three out of four. Um, half of them, by the way, oppose uh, 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 Greece going bankrupt. That's not much, it seems. 71%, an unfavorable view of the Euro. And 44% favor a return to the Deutschmark. Franziska Brontner, 44% for return to the Deutschmark. Your thoughts on that? You know, I think that this is true, but at the same time, the FDP, which was running a sort of anti-European campaign in the Berlin elections, didn't win any additional vote. Instead, they really lost. So I think when it comes to actually, you know, voting, not just polls, which can also, you know, always depend on how you actually ask the questions, then luckily the anti-European and a bit populist drive of the Liberal Party did not succeed, which made me very happy because I, I was afraid of that and actually did not happen. But it is true, German uh, citizens, as any citizen in Europe, are, you know, not happy with the current situation. We think it has been going on for way too long, and it's still not, you know, an end in sight. So I think, yes, there is a worry among German citizens, um, but it was just normal. I think we need a much more honest and open debate in Germany about what is going on, about the options, also about what would happen if we leave the euro. Um, but, you know, it's starting. But as I said, I was very happy about the outcomes of the Bolton elections. And, and, and on that point, uh, Franziska Brontner, um, the uh, finance minister in Germany and the uh, uh, chancellor today uh, staunchly denying that uh, this is just uh, that there's going to be more an even further enhanced uh, bailout fund, staunchly denying yeah. that there are going to be uh, euro bonds. Do you believe them? No, you know, that's exactly what I just meant by honesty in the debate. I think, you know, citizens are 
I, you know, really sick of hearing every another month. Now we do another step, and now we do another step, and everybody has the impression <laughs> that we are out of control. Um, and I think that is really damaging the European project and the European integration. And I think we really just need to be honest and say, look, this is how long it will take. Greece won't get well within a few months. It will take years. We will need time to get around Italy and probably won't be unless Berlusconi is off power. You know, I think we need to start speaking really honestly and citizens want that. Um, so, yes, I don't think it's really useful if we make big promises about things that we actually can't control right now. Marcus Ferber, your reaction? I think, um, of course, uh, Germans have a special relation to their currency, to the Deutschmark. It is linked to the successful history after World War II. And uh, therefore, of course, a lot of people think we had better times. But the truth is, uh, times would be worse if we would reintroduce the Deutschmark. And that is something politicians have to explain to the people. Look what Switzerland is doing for the moment as it is uh, protecting its currency and its economy by binding the Swiss franc uh, to the euro as uh, the 40 percent increase uh, they had in the last few months was uh, destroying the whole economical life in this country. And that was something which would happen for Germany in the good old Deutschmark uh, times as well. And uh, so that is really no option. But I, I think I, I, we can agree on that uh, we don't need slice by slice. We need a whole picture of what has to be done politically, what has to be done economically, what has to be done in Greece and in Europe. I think European Parliament will make tomorrow a great step forward um, voting in favor of a uh, new reshuffled uh, economic uh, governance package which is uh, reintroducing a stability and growth pact better than we had it ever before. Uh, let me go to Dublin now and, and, and uh, Owen O'Brien. Um, uh, uh, you, you heard the, uh, Marcus Ferber uh, saying Europe is taking care of its own business and we've seen some encouraging figures regarding a rebound uh, out of Ireland uh, after uh, the stiff measures that were taken there. Do you agree with Marcus Ferber? No, I don't, and, and the overwhelming majority of people, no matter what their party political affiliation here in Ireland, wouldn't agree with him either. First of all, there's a huge amount of market volatility, so it's, it's too soon to say exactly how they're responding to what's been taking place, uh, either here domestically uh, or in Brussels. What's clear, however, is, is most people, whether they're market uh, players or, or ordinary citizens, don't believe the kind of rhetoric they're hearing from parliamentarians either in Brussels, uh, figures in the Commission, or, or our own domestic politicians. Uh, and to go back to the earlier comments about the German uh, taxpayers, I have to say, quite frankly, that they're right. I mean, why would they want to pay out huge amounts of their hard-earned cash, bailing out banks, whether it's in Ireland, in Greece, in France, or even in their own country? There's a huge dissatisfaction among ordinary people right across the Eurozone with the failure of our political leaders to deal with actually what's the real crisis here, which isn't the deficit in Greece or in Portugal or, or in Ireland, but the enormous black hole at the centre of the European banking system. And there's a level of kind of dishonesty where people are almost pretending that the problem is errant peripheral economies such as Greece or Ireland, rather than dealing with the problem at the centre, which is the banking crisis. And until we look at and deal with the unsustainable levels of debt held by those banks and being passed on to taxpayers uh, through enormous loans to countries, again like ourselves, Portugal or Greece, uh, we're not going to be able to get to the other side of this crisis. And that's going to require serious burden sharing, uh, if not outright burning of bondholders, right across banks, uh, uh, rather than imposing huge austerity on ordinary working people, whether they be German, Greek or Irish. Mathieu Bouillet, we've been talking a lot about Germany. Let's just talk for one second about France, picking up on, on what uh, Owen just said there a minute ago. Um, uh, it's an election year. There's a presidential election coming up next May in this country. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you think that bailing out uh, Southern Europe is popular among voters? Um, well, then in Germany, actually, uh, we saw just la last week's um, same kind of, um, of results. Uh, for uh, the French opinion. Actually, French uh, people uh, also have uh, strong concerns uh, about uh, this EU, uh, EU crisis. Uh, but our, um, I think French uh, politicians have a very clear message about our uh, responsibility. 
because it's, it, it's not uh, a euro crisis, it's a debt crisis, but uh, its impact uh, it could be dramatic for the EU zone as a whole. So we have no choice but to help the indebted countries. So that's why actually... But that means, of course, one of the things that means is pooling the debt with these so-called euro bonds, which the Germans say they don't want. Yeah, that, that's a problem, actually. Uh, Germany is uh, still very opposed to this uh, solution, uh, which is uh, put forward by an increasing uh, number of experts and politicians, uh, Tremonti, Juncker and uh, Mario Draghi, the new chairman of the ECB um, and actually there is also a legal uh, obstacle because the highest German court uh, agreed um, with the legal legality of, uh, of the May uh, packages. Of but they say they won't go and further. Let's pick up on yeah. that point. Um, beware, again this week, uh, Andreas uh, uh, Voskula said, the president of the Constitutional Court, repeating what he, what he said, uh, telling the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung uh, that uh, there is little leeway left for giving up core powers to the EU. If one wants to go beyond this limit, which might be politically legitimate and desirable, then Germany must give itself a new constitution, a referendum would be necessary. This cannot be done without the people. Um, I just want to go first, before I go to, uh, to our, our, our German guests, I want to go to Owen O'Brien, because I know he, uh, we're, we're, we're going to lose him shortly on the feed there. Owen O'Brien, uh, you're the, yours is the last country in Europe uh, where uh, politicians went directly to the people with a referendum. What do you think of what the, uh, uh, the, the top judge in Germany says? Well, obviously, I'm not a, a constitutional lawyer, and I wouldn't be an expert in, in the, uh, the aspects of German law that the, the uh, report dealt with. Uh, but th there is a real question here, which is huge amounts has been asked of ordinary citizens, whether they be in Germany, uh, in France, in Ireland, or in Greece, whether it's the huge amounts of money that German and French taxpayers are, are, are being asked to pay into these bailout funds, or the huge amounts of austerity that those of us in Ireland and Greece are being asked uh, to endure. And uh, if we're going to take all of this burden, then the people have to have their say. So we've been arguing here for for example, in Ireland, that there should have been a referendum uh, on the stability mechanism. Uh, we've also argued that, I mean, in terms of the European Stability Fund, like, I mean, it's simply not enough to get uh, parliamentary ratification when, when such huge sums of money and dramatic impositions of policy uh, right across the social and economic spectrum uh, are being imposed by not only domestic governments, uh, but in conjunction with the EU uh, and the IMF. So I actually think there's a strong argument, irrespective of German constitutional law, that ordinary people need to have their say. Ultimately, we're full the bill, and we're not footing the bill to help out Greece or to help out Ireland or Portugal. We're footing the bill to pay out toxic debts in banks, French and German banks in particular, but also British banks and others, who lent recklessly uh, to banks and to governments in, in peripheral parts of the Eurozone, who then got themselves into enormous difficulty. So this isn't German or French citizens helping out the poor Greeks, Portuguese or Irish. This is them stabilising their own banking institutions and the European banking system at great cost to themselves uh, and to uh, uh, those of us in the periphery which is why, no matter whether we have any movement on euro bonds or an enlarged DSM or EFSF, it's not going to deal with the core problem, which is the huge debt of the banks. And until part of that debt is written down and not at the cost of ordinary taxpayers uh, or austerity uh, on ordinary working people, this crisis is simply going to trundle on. All right, Owen O'Brien, I want to thank you for, for joining us from Dublin. We're going to get back to that thank issue uh, uh, of the banks uh, uh, in part two. But before we go to the break, I, I want to first get uh, the reaction of Marcus Ferber. Uh, do you agree? If you want to go any further, it'll be time for a referendum in Germany. I think the highest uh, court, the constitutional court, made a clear judgment. Firstly, to say what has been done in the past is acceptable and uh, can be agreed on according to our constitutional law. But if uh, further integration processes are done, we have to rethink whether the core uh, of a, a member state, the core of Germany, is safeguarded or not. And that is the bridge when a referendum has to take place. I don't see that we are in that position for the moment because we do not need to, to strengthen European institutions by transferring new powers uh, uh, to Brussels on European level. I think if a uh, commission, and this is something we will listen tomorrow morning carefully with uh, President of Commission Barroso, is uh, safeguarding economical coherence, is safeguarding the single market, we are on the right track.